Colonial regions in EU4 exist only in the so-called New World and modern-day New Zealand in Australia. The rest is relegated to trade company zones, where the control of said regions is more abstract. But today, we're going to observe a world in which Africa and Asia are full of colonial zones as well. Should be fun. Sorry, no face cam. Today, I am in the process of moving, so you might not see me for a month or two. Sorry about that. Or, you know, <laughs> you're welcome, I guess. But generally, looking over here, you're going to see colonial Louisiana, colonial Mexico. And normally, over here, you're going to see, like, the Charter, Persian Charter, Hormuz Charter. When we look down in Africa, colonial Mali, colonial Guinea, all of these are colonial regions rather than trade regions now, or uh, rather charter regions, I guess you could say. And all of these can be colonized over in, except for China, even Burma will be a colony as will Indonesia uh, and all of that stuff. So we're even going to see a colonial Philippines, which is pretty cool. That is assuming that these dum-dums over here can get some colonization done. And there's only one way to find that out. Of course, we're going to turn it on up to speed five and unpause. <laughs> of course, early on, we're just going to expect the normal stuff. The Scots getting conquered by the Brits and the Irish, of course. The Hundred Years War ravaging France and the Ottomans doing their auto blobbing, pushing over into here already looking good and probably going to conquer the Byzantines if I had to guess. So yeah, realistically, this mod won't affect much until we get into the Age of Reformation and we start seeing some colonization. So uh, we'll see how things go with that. If I see anything interesting in the meantime, I'm obviously going to bring you in. Like, for example, the <laughs> Timurids just conquering all of the land over here in like Ladakh or whatever, and probably going to like full annex Baluchistan if I had to guess as well. So nice to see some expansive, oh my gosh, expansive, aggressive nations early on. I'm always a big fan of that. And if I can see the Mughals in any game, I'm very excited to see it. It'd be cool because uh, the Timurids getting big and strong and maybe even forming the Mughals means that uh, the colonizers are going to have their work cut out for them if they want to colonize these lands. And if they get some colonial nations set up, that would be awesome. Massive smackdown going on over here with uh, Danish, Russia, Norway, and Denmark and Holstein against Sweden, Scotland, and the Burgundian Vassal Swarm. It's actually kind of a slugfest, and I always love to see a nice big independence war for Sweden, especially early on. Meanwhile, France has kicked Brittany out of Brittany, as well as the English out of France, including Calais. So uh, definitely a really good start for France. Austria has annexed Bosnia and partially annexed Serbia. So what could possibly come from that? I have no idea. The Ottomans spared the Byzantines. They are now two provinces over here. They took Constantinople. And now Ramazan is looking really big, which is always funny to see a little nation like that popping off. Mamluks have terrible name placement, and I think I missed it. Muscovy had really funny name placement early on as well. So yeah, Sweden is broken free, ate a ton of land of Norway, and over here in Jutland, even uh, pushing them mostly out of the Skona land or Skania or however that is pronounced for the Danes. We have a Ducal Prussia based Catholic Ducal Prussia and then Muscovy consolidating much of the region over here, getting some land, I think, from the Danes and connecting up a lot of their subject territory, pushing into the Great Horde right now, being super, super aggressive. Oh, and they also ate like half of Lithuania. That's something to keep in mind as well. Meanwhile, over in Europe, Brandenburg pushing down into Bohemia, being partitioned between the Austrians, the freaking Thuringians <laughs> over here, and the Brandenburgers, uh, with Moravia independent, though soon to be annexed by the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, which is a PU, of course. Milan pushing over into Savoy, splitting it with the French, as well as eating up a ton of land in Genoa, who is uh, exiled to Montferrat. So very funny to see that stuff with an independent Corsica. And for some reason, Castile is uh, choosing violence and attacking the Portuguese. We do have our first idea groups unlocked and we have exploration for uh, the Castilians and the Portuguese with maritime going to the English and uh, administrative going to the French. The Portuguese are colonizing Cape Verde, but they have yet to discover the new world. So no colonization just yet. And besides, we've got some time. It's only 1482. Oh, and of course, I spoke too soon. The Timurids got... Um, they got bonked. Mewar doing pretty good over here, though, picking up a pieces of that shattered empire with Afghanistan, mostly existing outside of Afghanistan, Sistan taking the rest, Khorasan, and then an independent Yaz, which is really cool to see. My boys are even Zoroastrian, so I already know I'm rooting for them. We've got our first bits of colonization going on down in South America, with the Caribbean also being taken, and then the Frisians and the Swedes over here in Canada. So a little bit of variety, and I'm a big fan of that. Though it does look like Spain has seen better days, losing some of the Basque country to the French, and then uh, Portugal taking this area in Galicia. So, I don't know what's going on with that, but Spain has lost some land. 
who has been gaining land, meanwhile, is the Ottomans. Keep in mind, we're about 100 years in, so uh, a lot has changed. The Ottomans have taken a ton of land. They have gotten the Aelit over here in Egypt as well as in Arabia, so they are very much in a good position, and it looks like they are uh, conquering a bit more as we speak. Very funny to see Sir Hind, who is like a subject of Delhi in 1444, basically forming Iran slash like Punjab, so <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Also a big fan of this, whatever this is, China completely collapsing and uh, falling into disarray with Manchu formed and Japan united and Korea with perfect mwah, 1444 borders. Thunderdome over in the east, you love to see it. Though these big blobs over in India are definitely going to be giving the colonizers a little bit of a uh, run for their money. So we may not see a whole lot of colonization over here, but you know, only time will tell. Oh, and I missed this. We do have a Spanish Guinea colony that has formed, um, though they are currently, you know, losing, well, at least getting beat up on in a war. Looks like Spain attacked Timbuktu on their behalf and is getting uh, dumpstered. Typical colonial gameplay. <laughs> Sacrifice the colonies for the greater good, you know, all that stuff. And interestingly enough, Sweden doesn't have any colonial ideas and they don't have any colonists. So I don't really know how they did all that, uh, but I do love to see Denmark getting eaten by Lubeck. I'm, that is really cool. And I guess I missed the fact that Austria-Hungary has been completely, completely dismantled with basically just part of Austria proper, not even having VN and then a little bit of Bohemia with Bohemia and Oam province minor over in Prague and then Poland taking the rest as well as all the land up here. So uh, Muscovy, Poland, the Ottomans, there's a lot of very blobby nations going on and we are only a hundred years in. And a hundred years later, Great Britain has formed, France has taken a lot of land and I mean a lot of it with Munster taking a ton of land over here in Northern Germany with some uh, interesting looking borders, I will say. Poland name is all over here and they are looking to make their name look much better by annexing uh, Lithuania or at least Lithuanian lands. Meanwhile, Russia has formed and is um there. This is it. This is what Russia looks like, I guess. Meanwhile, a little bit out to the east, you got Bukhara, the nation so nice that they named it thrice. And the Ottomans looking incredibly terrifying. Meanwhile, I get comments, angry comments typing. <laughs> Actually, the Ottomans got nerfed. They got nerfed. Shut up, Jimmy. You don't know what you're talking about. Spain down here in Africa. Lots of land, uh, and it doesn't look like they have their colony down here anymore. Not sure about that one. Though it is kind of funny to see Songhai push like out of Songhai. Looks like they were bigger and they got cut down the middle, if I had to guess. We have British South Africa with Mutapa owning the Cape. Very funny. And a Dakon that has formed looking very beefy. Uh, and an Ayutthaya that has gotten eaten up a bit over here and has migrated down into Sumatra, I think this island is. So they're looking very good. Meanwhile, Brunei has lots of land over here. Uh, doesn't look like the Philippines are going to be contested too heavily, though the colonization is definitely still going to happen. We do have Portuguese Australia, just across from Portuguese Australia, uh, with no one else really on the main islands, but we do have the Spanish and the English in the area taking up all the, the little islands. So uh, we'll see it happen, I'm sure. China is looking just as bad as it did before, with Shun taking like modern Manchuria borders for China, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, we'll see how things look moving forward with this. So far, not much different from the last time, except for Korea taking Vladivostok. So <laughs> they did do that. But of course, the new world is developing. We've got Rio de Prata, Spanish Brazil has formed, and uh, New Granada up here in the north with uh, this new Spain. They just went through and annexed the Aztecs, you know? So anyways, they started blasting. The Caribbean is entirely going to um, the Portuguese, though it does look like, I think Trinidad and Tobago are technically the Caribbean. I could be wrong. And the French took the East Coast. I feel like you don't see colonial French as often, um, so that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, the left coast is all going to the British with British Columbia tucking up over here. So definitely some good developments, though can't say we're seeing anything new from the mod, but hopefully we will. We've got about 100 years left in the game. Congo, right next to the Portuguese Congo, looking quite good. It's actually the only colony in Africa. Uh, the British were kicked out of South Africa by Mutapa. And then Mutapa ended up kicking the Ottomans out of basically everywhere else in Africa. And you know it's the 1700s because the Ottomans are dead. And complain about it all you want. I love to see this. This, not so much, but I'm sure it's not going to last forever. The revolution has come to France. Surprise, surprise. And Munster has come to Norway. Legitimately a surprise. Lubeck with their capital down here in southern Sweden. Very funny, right next to the most massive Poland I have ever seen because apparently Poskagorum. <laughs> but yeah, Germany is like a couple of nations. It's like seven total tags own land in Germany. The Pope man doing fine. Um, and then Sardinia just 
A one province miner, surrounded by the French, but um, I have a feeling not for long. Spain continued to dominate over in West Africa and uh, South America, not so much. Looks like Spanish Brazil broke free. I don't know who uh, Peru was owned by, but they have broken free. Um, we also have some shenanigans going on over here. It looks like the Spanish decided to take the uh, British Columbia from the uh, British and uh, Mexico has broken free from the Spanish as well. So a bit of ups and downs, I imagine. War with France has been a big contributing factor to that. But don't worry, the British are over in the Hudson Bay to make sure that the uh, North American beaver populations absolutely plummet. Over in India, Deccan is actually dominating. We have no colonial nations outside of, like, Deccan. Deccani Africa <laughs> is a thing. Deccani Malaccas, though they, it's not a colonial nation because they own land. Their capital is in Asia, so they can't have a continent in Asia. That's how it works out. We do have one though. This is Portuguese Philippines. So we do have at least one, <laughs> at least one from the mod. Two, if you include the Congo. Though colonies in the Congo historically haven't worked out for the people of the Congo. Don't ask a Belgian colonist where he was between 1885 and 1908. So with a little under 100 years left, the French are out in front and by a long shot, way ahead of Poland, who's actually doing really good. Poland has the largest name, but not the most development. Spain right behind them, though uh, mostly colonial nation stuff. So Spain probably won't be finishing super powerful. Great Britain in the fourth spot, despite losing quite a bit of their colonial stuff. Portugal, colonial nation in the fifth spot. Dakon, you love seeing an Indian nation in the top eight, and Dakon is no exception. Over 2,000 development, they would actually be the fourth great power once they embrace institution, which you love to see. And then a new world nation of Mexico in the seventh spot with Mutapa, an African minor nation in the eighth. This is a really good run, even if we don't have these uh, colonial nation buffs. I'm a big fan of this. And um, yeah, this is this is how we end, and I have, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing, man. Poland decided to form the Commonwealth and then decided to completely get dismantled by a bunch of revolutionary nations with Russia, <laughs> apparently. A revolutionary, Kasim, Polotsk, or whatever, Novgorod, they're all revolutionary. So that's pretty funny. Even the revolutionary <laughs> great horde, bro. So looking at all the revolutionary nations, it's very clear to see that uh, the French Revolution was very strong all the way from Brittany over to like central Anatolia, even up in northern Germany, where Munster has apparently dominated all of it as well as southern Scandinavia. But don't worry, Gotland is here and they are also revolutionary. Congo has come back and Spanish Guinea and Niger has been released. So I don't know how that happened. Same with Milan. Um, their capital was up in Madrid the whole time, so I don't know how that worked, but it is how it worked out. Uh, Hindustan formed and is super powerful, like one of the strongest AI nations I have seen in a long time out of India, though it looks like they lost some land to Mutapa down here in the south. Shun and Wu over here in Japan, and Wu is actually the empire of China, and they have like 60, uh, whatever the like the uh, China power is. So, hey, the, the, the mandate is not completely gone. Uh, Japan over here conquering some land in Manchuria, except for Vladivostok, which Korea has had. It is now canon. Vladivostok is Korea. Also, Manchu is a one province minor. So <laughs> that's a thing as well. South America was consolidated a bit. Peru ate up all of the land down here. Brazil split it with them. Colombia is free. And uh, and then when we take a look up in the north, you're going to see you're going to see some stuff. Almost perfect borders for an entirely North American Mexico. So, I don't know how this happened. They were on the great powers list before, and I have no doubt that they have risen on that great powers list. All the way up to the number three <laughs> great power of the world, Mexico, with over 4,000 development. That is absolutely legendary. France is up to 6,000. I want to say they were about 5,000 last time, so they haven't grown a whole lot. And Hindustan over 4,000 as well. So the top three great powers all from different continents. Very cool. Actually, the top four all from great continents. That is awesome. Munster, the number five great power, passing the Commonwealth. <laughs> I, you can't make this stuff up, man. And then Spain and then Wu, the empire of China there in the eighth spot. Fully stacked economic hegemon revolutionary France truly terrifying. Religious map mode is very yellow over here with some Anglican and some Orthodox as you would expect but uh, boy this is so so filthy and messy. Doesn't look like uh, the Commonwealth or Poland had converted quite a lot of the land over here that they had conquered except for maybe out here in Siberia and um, yeah 
that probably didn't help them when it came to their um, their unrest. It does look like Hindustan is Shia, which I believe they are Shia in 1444, this Bamhanis, so makes sense. It's all fetishist down here, and it's all Catholic throughout the rest, minus a couple of Sunni colonial nations for the Spanish. South America, as is North America, basically exclusively Catholic with some animist provinces and a couple of Anglican provinces here and there, but <laughs> very, uh, very yellow. Culturally, it looks like uh, the Franks did a bit of concert conversion over here with Lombard Neapolitan making up the majority of the Italian development with Frankian over here in the central portions of Tuscany and pushing Gascon culture into the uh, the Basque country and over here in northern Spain. So that's pretty cool. Lower Saxon over here in Copenhagen is uh, it's pretty funny in my opinion. North America is very French and Quebecois as well as uh, very, very, very Mexican and Castilian where the south is mostly Platinian and Portuguese. Sounds about right. Couple of Portuguese provinces over here and then down under, though uh, I'm pretty sure that, um, yeah, Hindustan took Australia and uh, New Guinea from the uh, Portuguese, so not really too surprising considering how powerful they are. So overall, did it affect the game? I don't really think so, but <laughs> somehow things managed to be way more complicated and way more like chaotic than I would have anticipated otherwise. I'm currently in the process of moving house, so if you want to uh, pitch me a couple of dollars on my Patreon or become a channel member, you can check out the link in the description below the video. And you're gonna miss out on it if you're not already subscribed, so make sure that you subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified when these videos go up live every week. And most of all, I wanna let you know that I really do appreciate you making it to the very end of this video, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.